Hello, my name is E.J. Ott, and let's talk about the Bible. Yesterday, we talked about the motive behind the lawyer when he asked that question to Jesus. Today, i like to talk a little bit more about that question. Luke goes on to say that this man was testing Jesus. So, he had some intentions behind it. And yes, yesterday we talked about how the Pharisees and the elders and the leaders of Israel were feeling threatened by Jesus because of his popularity. So then, if that was their concern, why ask this question specifically? Now yesterday I talked about how Jesus was off in Bethsaida and he fed the 5,000 people over there. And that could have been a catalyst for this question because Bethsaida was not within the Jewish territory. And the people living outside of this territory was considered Gentiles. So Jesus went out and fed 5,000 people in a Gentile area. So that might have rubbed the leaders in the wrong way. But why this question specifically? The answer, I think, is in fear. What do these Pharisees and elders and leaders of Israel fear the most? It's to lose their power. It's to lose their hold on this nation, on these people. Then the question is, how? Do they exert their power over them in an era where the Roman Empire has already conquered them? Moses gave the Israelites a set of laws. They followed it. Sometimes they didn't follow it. Sometimes they did. But when they did not follow the laws, they are conquered by other countries. And at the end, because they did not follow these set of laws, they were conquered by Babylon, and afterwards, Israel was no more for a very long time. And through this lesson, the religious leaders of Israel implemented a strict set of extra laws on top of the Mosaic laws, so that if the threshold for Mosaic laws was here, and if you pass that law, then you, are, you have committed a sin, they put an extra law below it to buffer your propensity to go up and actually disobey the Mosaic laws. So in essence, what they did was, for instance, on a Sabbath, you're not allowed to work. So because the word work is subjective, they put regulations after regulations putting an objective standard on work so you're not allowed to walk walk so many miles you're not allowed to do a certain thing and on top of what the mosaic laws have said and in having these laws they have put in place a set of system that keeps the people under their power and with Jesus coming in, that's what they would have been the most afraid of. So, in order to keep their power, what do they need to do? They can't just go out to the people and say, Oh, because we're jealous of this one guy, and because he's telling the truth, uh, we should persecute him. Don't follow him because we're jealous of him. That does not fly. So what do they do? They come to Jesus with this question. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? The answer is, just as it is said in the Bible, love your God and love your neighbors. That's the answer. But he wanted to ask, who is 
your neighbor to Jesus. Because by saying that, by saying that, he is dividing the people up. A few days ago when Jesus fed the 5,000 people, everybody there had become one. Every, Jesus brought people together. But by this one question, who is my neighbor? This lawyer, this teacher of the law, sought to divide the people. Who's on my side? Who's on your side? Exactly how the politicians today divide the people up. That way, you can stay in power. That's what he was doing. Jesus went out to a area outside of Judea and he performed miracles. And because he did that, this lawyer is calling for the people who were who was listening on, he was telling those people, "Hey, this guy is not on our side." He's telling the people that wake up. You guys are not the same. Because the only way that these people hold on to their power is the notion of being holy, the selected, the chosen one. And because of that notion of being chosen, these people will endure the harsh laws that the lawyers and the elders and the leaders of Israel impose on them just because they believe that they are chosen. And that's what this lawyer is banking on. He's saying to the people, Hey, you guys are chosen. You guys are not, not the same. This guy, Jesus, is acting as if you guys are all the same. And is giving the same blessing of healing and food to everyone, including the Gentiles. And that's wrong. He's saying that in the face of the listeners and to Jesus and to his disciples. And that is the hidden motive behind this question. Who is my neighbor? Because he is seeking to divide and conquer. Even today, who wants better health care? Who wants better welfare? Everybody does. But how does a political party force their agenda on the common people? Divide and conquer. Black, white, gays, straight, Christians, Muslims. That's how they do it. But Jesus will have nothing to do with it. That's one of the hidden stories inside our passage. This lawyer standing up to divide and conquer and Jesus trying to pull people together. This is how I study the Bible. Looking in, seeing the motives behind the people and seeing how Jesus answers them. So come along for the ride. Subscribe and leave a comment below. See you guys on the other side. Bye bye.